Here we are, 2024. Can you believe it? As we say, we say the year of our Lord, 2024. Each year we pray is the year our Lord returns. That's our hope and our prayer as Seventh-day Adventist Christians. Amen? Amen. Amen. Everything we do is for his glory and for this purpose, to help complete the gospel work so Jesus can return. He's co-laboring with us. I'll talk more about that, but let's pause as we have another moment to pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to be in worship, to open your word, to read, to invite your spirit to stay not only, only in our midst, but in our hearts to lead us. So please move me out of the way so we can see Jesus clearly, I pray in his name, amen. December 21, we were gearing up for many months, a few months, to prepare as a family, my household at my wife's desire to go on a family vacation for the first time in a long time. Now, even if the pandemic hadn't change things in our lives back then. It's just difficult to get a family of five out the door to go anywhere, to, the, to out to eat together, let alone a holiday. But we did it, knowing the risks with COVID still around the world and all of the restrictions of leaving one country and going into another and boarding here and getting off there. And we had like a half a dozen COVID tests in a period of 10 days it seemed, as we went to Paris and then to London and back home at the turn of the year. So, so we were in Paris on the 25th of December and, and we're planning to get back here on December 31st. But one of the reasons that we were inspired to go through that risk is because we understood how grateful we were, and that it could be the last time as a family we could get everyone together in, in that uh, framework. Because as my kids become young adults and then go into college and get jobs and things like this, our schedules might not be compatible for a family vacation together, all five of us. So with that in mind, this could be the last time we did it. We saved, we planned. And praise the Lord, we made it there and back without anyone getting stuck or stranded because of COVID. We were trying to say, okay, what happens if you get COVID? Are we gonna leave you for that 10 week quarantine time or whatever it was back then, 10 days? So luckily we didn't have to try to make that hard choice. Do we all stay stuck in Paris for an extra week or leave someone behind? This could be the last time can also be more sad to deal with as the reality of it is this could be the last communion we celebrate together as a group. If Jesus returns, amen? We aim for that. Unfortunately, someone might pass away and not be able to celebrate the next communion. We might have different schedules that move us out of town or life events take us away and we won't be able to celebrate in this capacity with this very same makeup of our membership and, and congregants and visitors and regular attenders. This could be the last time. And so, in the context of humanity, there are many people that have a difficult time even saying the words goodbye because it seems so final because of the sadness of never seeing each other again, because we do live in this reality of our mortality. And we shouldn't be ignorant of this fact. So as Christians, we tend to not shy away from saying goodbye. Now we've heard it said at funerals to soothe the sadness of saying goodbye. We're, we're saying see you later, yes, because we do believe in a resurrection and the second coming and that this is just temporary. So yes, we can say, see you later. But at the same time, we can say goodbye. And I'll explain that. 
because we do believe it is possible to say goodbye and it doesn't have to be final. Amen? It does not have to be final to never see someone again. So in moments like these right now, as we're bringing and painting this picture, thinking and realizing that this could be the last time we fill in the blank, have communion together, eat lunch together, worship in this context, in freedom, in truth. We need not despair thinking about this because, indeed, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 declares we need not mourn as others mourn who have no hope. Amen? So we need not avoid saying goodbye because we understand we must move on and face this prospect of never seeing each other again in this life as it is now in this dreadful broken world before the second coming. This is a reality and we can avoid don't have to avoid saying goodbye because it denies the importance of the reality that it is painful to say goodbye, to be absent from one another for a time or indefinitely until Jesus' return as we miss our loved ones dearly right now. Many of you going through mourning and it's so fresh and painful and raw. But to deny the goodbye and to deny the sadness that each of us are experiencing denies the importance of living life right now to the fullest as Jesus intended us to do. To take advantage of life right now as we have it, understanding that this could be the last time. Do you get it? So we understand this reality that there may be a separation time unmet expectations, an absence of each other from one another for a period of time. And no matter how many texts and Facebook posts and phone calls and letters we write to one another with updates and sharing our experience and how many Bible passages we read for comfort, we at some point might not be available for one another for a given period of time until the earth is made new The second coming occurs and the earth is made new. This is the reality we live in. So the word goodbye actually is a contraction, a 16th century contraction that means God be with you. So when we declare goodbye, let us also declare our our hope and our promise and expectation that Jesus will return and fix things. Amen? Amen. God be with you, goodbye. See you later, goodbye. Until then. So saying goodbye is important. And in the end, because it's one of the ways we remind each other that we are God's children and that we want him to watch over one another as we are separate from one another. We want him to keep our love for one another strong and close, whether we are close in proximity or not, right now, even so, in the midst of all of this, before the day of resting in the grave, if that happens to us before his return, or we get to live and see Jesus without seeing death, either way, we can say goodbye with hope, without despair, with happiness in the midst of our pain because goodbye declares our belief that he will watch over us. Amen? He will watch over us. How does he do this? With his guardian angels, with his Holy Spirit. God, the Holy Spirit watches out over us. He comforts us. He also gives us guidance in Scripture. I'm going to bring in verse 8 from our scripture passage today to lead into this. Verse 8 declares in Romans 13, don't be in debt to anyone except for the obligation to love each other. Whoever loves another person has fulfilled the law. Then Paul here goes into a reminder of the Ten Commandments. Some of them don't commit adultery and murder and steal and desire what others have. And any other commandments, these are all summed up in one word. 
You must love your neighbor as yourself. So in the context of saying goodbye, in the context of Paul writing this letter to the church in Rome, which he had not visited yet at this point, but knew they were struggling in the midst of a society. These are Gentiles, converts, now embracing Christianity and trying to influence their culture, their society, and lead people to Jesus in the midst of animosity and brewing hatred. Love your neighbor, he declares. Yeah, you get it. You understand the commandments. This is also Paul's epistle declaring righteousness by faith. Jesus has this all covered. You are saved by faith through grace. Now get out there and love one another. Love doesn't do anything wrong to a neighbor in verse 10. Therefore, love is what fulfills the law. As you do all this, you know what time it is. See, this is the importance because this could be the last time. You know what time it is, Paul is declaring. The hour has already come for you to wake up from your sleep. Now your salvation is nearer than we first had faith. So now as we reach, read into Scripture, read Scripture to see what Jesus has for us in guidance. He says he loves you. He saved you. He's got you. You can say goodbye to a loved one as we lay, unfortunately, from time to time, our loved ones to rest. But with, with hopeful assurance that Jesus will return and fix things, this is the guidance to live life for one another. Live for Jesus, yes. He's, he's got that. We've got that clear. Because of Jesus now, we do our best to be obedient, but by faith, Christ's merits are what count. And as we do our best to live according to the law, the ultimate fulfillment comes from loving one another. Making the most of this moment because this could be the last time. So what shall we do? Love one another. Serve one another. Be like Jesus. As Paul is writing about our righteousness by faith and building up the church and spreading the gospel, leading people to Jesus, what should we do? Noting that his return is imminent. While we wait, keep this fact in front. Live with this hope. Make the best of every relationship. S spend time fixing relationships that have been severed. Spend time making new relationships to find out who does not yet have a relationship with Jesus so that you can lead them to Jesus. Because this could be the last time they have a connection with someone who knows Jesus. Love one another because this could be the last time we have an opportunity. And as the ceremonies we celebrate now together, the ordinance of foot washing and communion remind us of this very fact to love one another as Jesus served and saved us through his service so that through faith by grace, we are saved to love one another, to live for Jesus. So let us, let God guide us in our decisions on how we prioritize our time in building relationships and making every effort to make the most out of these relationships. To read verse 11 again, as you do all this, you know what time it is. The hour has already come for you to wake up from your sleep now our salvation is nearer than when we first had faith. Love your neighbor. Be like Jesus. Meet people's needs. Repair broken relationships. Get rid of impediments in our lives that distract us from doing these things. And I invite each of us to participate together in these reminders, the ordinance of foot washing and the communion service. At Seventh-day Adventists, we practice open communion. If you profess Jesus as your Savior, even if you're not an official member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, we invite you to participate with us. And parents, family, as you're raising your children, you are also allowed to explain the symbols and have them partake. 
as they grow in stature and in Christ through these reminders of our faith and our hope. Amen? Amen. Let us pause as I benedict us through prayer and prepare for the foot washing service. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to remember Jesus through these ceremonies. As we have hope you're coming soon and that this could be the last time we're together, we need not mourn because of you, dear Jesus. Thank you as we remember this fact. Fill our lives and bless everything we do now for your glory and honor, we pray in Jesus' name, amen.